For now, let's look at some important results of Bernoulli's equation. For that, let's consider a special type of tube, this, which has a greater area of cross-section over here and a lesser area of cross-section over here. Now, if I apply Bernoulli's theorem to these two points, right, say 1 and 2, it'll be P1 plus rho G H1 plus half rho V1 squared should be equal to P2 plus rho G H2 plus half rho V2 squared, right? Now, obviously, H1 equals H2. So that term gets cancelled. So if I if I cancel that, what do I get? We get P1 plus half rho V1 squared equals P2 plus half rho V2 squared, right? Now, again, if I rearrange this, I get P1 minus P2 equals half rho V2 squared minus V1 squared. Now, we already know from the equation of continuity that the speed over here will be greater because the area is lesser, right? Because A1, V1 should be equal to A2, V2. Lesser area means greater speed. So, that means V2 will be greater than V1. So, the term on the right-hand side will always be positive, which again means that P1 minus P2 will be positive, or in other words, P1 will always be greater than P2. So, Bernoulli's equation basically tells us that when an incompressible fluid is flowing from a higher area of cross-section to a lower area of cross-section, the flow lines sort of get crowded and therefore the speed increases and of course the pressure reduces at that point. So this result is actually used in many real-world applications. And the most common of them all is the Venturi meter. Now, the Venturi meter is basically a device that's used to measure the speed of flow of a fluid. Now, how does it work? It's fairly simple. It's exactly the same setup. And you, you just add a U-tube to the bottom, that's all. And fill it with an incompressible liquid of high density, rho. Let's say the density of that liquid is rho. Now, because the pressure here is greater, at point one is greater, that would push the liquid down, right? causing the levels to be uneven. And moreover, the pressure at this point will be P1, which is the pressure at this point. Similarly, the pressure at this point will be P2, and which is the pressure at this point, right? Now, what will P1 be equal to over here? P1 will obviously be equal to P2 plus rho G H, where H is the difference, right, in the heights of these levels, right? Okay, so if we measure this H, we can actually measure the pressure difference and therefore we can measure the difference in speeds as well and using that we can calculate the, the speed of the fluid when it enters. Later, we will derive how exactly we can measure the speed of the fluid. So the same result is also used in everyday aspirators and sprayers. Now what are these aspirators or sprayers? They are, they are simply the ones that you use uh, to spray perfumes, for example, or insecticides, etc., so on and so forth. Now, this is a simple representation of an aspirator pump. Now, what happens is when you push the piston this side, you're basically pushing the air and increasing the speed of the air at this point. Now, therefore, because the speed increases, the pressure at this point reduces, and that sucks out the liquid which is over here and sprays it. And simple. That's, that's simply how it works. Now, let's talk about how planes fly. Now, I'm pretty sure you'd have wondered how a plane that's carrying so much cargo and multiple passengers is actually able to fly. Now, yes, a plane has wings, but these wings don't flap. They do something very different. They generate lift. And it's all because of their weird shape. Now, this is the side view of the wing, by the way, and the cross-section, basically. And this kind of an object, which is shaped like this, is basically called an aerofoil. Now, what happens is that when a plane is accelerated in the forward direction, when it reaches a speed of around 280 kilometers an hour, if you look at it from the frame of view of the wing, this is what is happening. In this frame, the air is moving back at 280 kilometers an hour, right? And because of this shape, because of this weird shape, the flow lines, as you see, get crowded on top. And therefore, the speed is greater at the top than at the bottom. This therefore leads to a pressure difference, just like we saw in the previous case. With the pressure on top being less, 
than the pressure at the bottom. Right? And of course, a greater pressure difference means a greater force. And that means net force is upwards. This upward force is what we call lift. And so, we have takeoff. <laughs>